story and we're, today we are looking at specifically some of Gilmore's inspirational ideas and concentrating I suppose on the year 1891 for a start because Gilmore wasn't just about performance and producing a, a concert program etc etc he liked the unusual he liked the talent and he liked to promote it here's a lady a little girl called Maud Powell Maud would become the greatest um, violinist in America um, for years to come and in 1891 here she is at the bottom of this uh, concert program Miss Maud Powell the artist of the Gilmore's Festival Tour 1891 where she toured with Gilmore's band and went uh, coast to coast, north to south and was greeted with um, delight by the uh, public at that time. Um, here is the advertisement, uh, or one of those advertisements for the Grand Festival Concert Gilmore the greatest of all bandmasters, etc., etc., and it says Miss Maud Powell, and then the rest of the um, soloists on that tour. Later on, uh, after Gilmore's death, Maud Powell would play with the U.S. Marine Band. Here's the U.S. Marine Band below this advertisement with John Philip Sousa, director. Um, on that tour, uh, this is an example of um, uh, Maud's solo performances souvenir de, de moscow by vianiski and um, miss maud powell um, and in the second part of that concert fantasia faust uh, miss maud powell saras atti so um the, it gives you a great idea of um how gilmore was promoting this um promoting music developing music trying to encourage people to get involved in music here's from my um file folder on mod um from 1891 and that uh, combined with um computer uh, files etc etc is absolutely chocker block full of details about this this tour and how um, she was greeted. Here's Maud in later life, an absolute glorious lady, and she developed teaching techniques and so on and so forth, all of which have been explored and written about by Karen Schaeffer, um, who I believe is the director of the Maud Powell Society in the US. And I would encourage everyone to visit that site it's uh, modpowell.org and here in fact is the is the um uh, website you'll find it ju just do a search modpowell.org and you'll find out all there is to be found out about this wonderful lady and indeed about the society itself second person we're going to visit is an irishman called edward o'mahony the greatest irish american ba bass this country has known his voice became remarkably deep and powerful etc now the f uh, edward o'mahony the first we meet edward o'mahony i think was 1879 and that was through um a newspaper article in County Cork, in Cork City. Here it is. Edward O'Mahony left Cork for Italy to perfect his musical education. Those who were in the habit of frequenting our cathedral must have been familiar with the full bass in which he sang the glorious music of the church. He went to Milan and there he became a star very quickly because he was known as Edoardo O'Mahony. Edoardo. So here is when he uh, arrives in Boston and he's greeted by Julius Eichberg, who was a great friend of Gilmore's, of course. And he was actually the organizer of the choirs for the Peace Jubilees. Um, and there uh, you saw the welcoming that he gave and the... the um, and later on, uh, again, another Gilmore link... Um, 
O'Mahony played with Jules Levy, the former cornetist who had assumed uh, basically the position after the departure of um, uh, Matthew Arbuckle. Um, and for the next few years, O'Mahony would play with or sing with uh, Levy on his tours, um, which was some feat in itself because Levy was, let's be kind and say, tempestuous. Um, Major Pond at the end of this uh, advertisement is the man that's organising this um, concert and he's a former Gilmore manager. Uh, so basically he's getting mentoring as far as I can see from Gilmore in the background. Um, another um, mentor is a, a Carla Rosa Opera Company in England uh, because um, Euphrosine um, Paripa Rosa uh, sang with Gilmore in the Peace Jubilees in Boston. And here we see in um, uh, the, the announcement of a series of concerts been done with P.S. Gilmore. And this would be, um, I believe, in 1890. Um, the instrumentalist will be such and such. And here is the cover of that 1890, Edward O'Mahony, bass. And uh, Gilmore's wonderful band. And for the next few years, Gilmore and O'Mahony will sing together. It must have been pretty difficult for um, a vocalist to perform as often as was required. Here's 1891, uh, sorry, 1890, but on to 1891. And again, um, uh, Edward is singing. Now, bear in mind, he's a bass profundo, very, very deep, extraordinary deep. And in fact, his favourite piece of music is In the Cradle of the Deep. He could sing. He could hold the notes. He had wonderful control and so on. And in this tabernacle, he packed them in for 12,000 of an audience each night. In Nebraska, in Bohannon's Hall, uh, again on the same tour, um, uh, such um, gr all of these people greeted this wonderful music that was coming from the East Coast over to the West. And if you like, the West was been won, musically speaking. Um, 16 instrumental soloists and four vocal artists. And of course, one of those is Omani. Now, later when Gilmore himself dies in 1892, it's Omani that is there to comfort um, Mrs. Omani and uh, so on. Uh, sorry, Mrs. Gilmore, when her husband is... Um, has passed on and comforts her at the uh, graveside as well. The only thing we could find at the at the time was uh, relations of Omani in um, Cork and we've since found his grave. More of that later. The third area of uh, um, inspirational ideas was in Solos. In 1878, Gilmore played in the European tour. We'll see more about that. Crystal Palace. And in this, he emphasizes the solos. This wasn't done in Europe or in America at that time. Um, now, Gilmore starts uh, promoting the solos on his concert program, like here. Bent, uh, uh, Lax, uh, Di Carlo, uh, Matos, etc., etc., uh, later on, Sousa realises how important uh, um, that move by Gilmore is because Sousa starts uh, basically recruiting, let's use that word, uh, from the old Gilmore organisation and he ends up with a huge number, for instance, Raffaello, Stegler, uh, Norito, Lacalo, Lefebvre, Bode, Clark, Shannon, v Wadsworth, etc., and that um, ended up um, basically being well publicized as being almost dirty tricks. And to, to give you one last idea, how talented this band was, when would this happen today that you would go into your concert and you would vote for a piece of music you'd love to hear 
and then during the concert there would be a, a whatever a vote taken uh, you know what overture did people want to hear or another piece or whatever it is you'd sign at the bottom you'd fill out this form sign at the bottom with your address and they would play the piece of music what a talented group of people these were listen thank you very much for your uh, concentration and your time and click subscribe and like and we'll talk to you next week